KTEH recently spoke with the Tibetan government's prime minister in exile when he was visiting the Bay Area. The Tibetan leader addressed the influence of Mahatma Gandhi and his countrymen's nonviolent approach in dealing with the Chinese military. Mr. Prime Minister, how do you incorporate what Gandhi's teachings with, with nonviolence and, and your movement? What Gandhi have taught was very important for the Buddhist people because Buddha have taught nonviolence and Mahavir has taught nonviolence. The teaching of nonviolence is not new. In India, the teaching of nonviolence remained there more than 5,000 years. But uh, all the uh, <clears throat> time in the history, people could not uh, understand how the nonviolence can be applicable to uh, politics, to socioeconomic, and to um, uh, national struggle and so forth. We always uh, thought that nonviolence is something uh, to be practiced for spiritual uh, journey alone, for religious people alone. <coughs> uh, for the management of society or management of state, uh, complete nonviolence is uh, not uh, possible. This uh, misconception was uh, dispelled by uh, Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, he said, in every sphere of life, it may be politics, it, is, it may be a, a freedom struggle for a nation, it may be rebuilding of nation, it may be a, a defense of nation. Everywhere, every sphere, nonviolence is the best way and best method um, to achieve the uh, goals. The Tibetan struggle for the last uh, uh, more than uh, 40 years been uh, completely free from any kind of violence and uh, particularly we are proud that uh, the Tibetans living inside Tibet in spite of all kind of provocation they are able to maintain a non-violent resistance so that is remarkable that is why the PRC is not in a position to uh, completely do away with the resistance in, inside Tibet. Mr. Prime Minister Tibet, Buddhism, has a tradition of nonviolence, yet you're dealing with a country that's not opposed to using force. How do you deal with that? The uh, power and force which the People's Republic of China commands today cannot be uh, matched by any other power. So they are, I think, almost a superpower in this world. But nonviolence power is uh, much more than any kind of violence power. Now, violence power is based on uh, truth and uh, based on uh, interdependence uh, origination. So, therefore, uh, it is not difficult for us to, be, to deal with the PRC because uh, they do not have any moral strength, they do not have any uh, uh, strength of truth, they do not have uh, uh, any uh, courage of uh, uh, righteousness. So, therefore, uh, their strength is uh, just uh, artificial and our strength is in reality. So that is why we are able to uh, deal with them face to face, although we are in any way can match economically or military power or anything. Uh, in spite of that, the moral strength and uh, the, the, the power of truth make us uh, uh, capable to uh, uh, talk with them. and. Uh, since I have taken the charge of the executive or political leadership in Dharamshala, we have nine rounds of dialogue with them face to face. And uh, during which period we uh, were able to uh, make our position clear to them and we are also able to understand what they are looking for. So uh, I think uh, the uh, continuous of this kind of dialogue might be able to bring uh, some solution to the Tibet issue.